Hello, everyone. My name is Omar Awan. I'm the Associate PD for the Radiology Residency at University of Maryland. I want to talk today about good and bad letters of interest. This is now the time where a lot of applicants are reaching out to me about, you know, a letter of interest. I'm reading a ton of letter of interest. So I thought I'd give a PD perspective on some examples of those that are good and those that are really not so good. So, you know, the bottom line is, should you write one? Well, there are conflicting uh, opinions about this when I've sort of asked PDs across specialties, so radiology, dermatology, internal medicine, surgery, and most people say it's sort of a fishing expedition, meaning it's really, they read tons, hundreds of, you know, letters of interest. It may or may not help you. You know, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, it probably has a low chance of helping you, but it can, it certainly can, right? And the bottom line is, writing one, you have nothing to lose. And if anything, you're either going to get an interview after that letter or the same thing's going to happen. You didn't, you're not going to get an interview, which is what would have happened if you didn't write it, right? So my sense is you should, there's no harm in writing one. And in fact, if you do a really good job, it's possible that you'll actually get an interview doing it. So uh, I think it really can't hurt you. There are certain elements of a good letter of interest. You know, after reviewing hundreds and thousands of these, I came up with a mnemonic that ERCP, with everyone in the medical field, knows what an ERCP is. So I thought ERCP would be a nice mnemonic for a good letter of interest. And that means engaging, meaning it has to be somewhat different. I have to be engaged. You have to engage the reader very quickly. And it has to be different than the vast majority of other letters that they're reading. It has to be relevant. It has to be compelling. Like it has to have real examples or real evidence of why you want to go to a certain place for residency, right? It has to be relevant. It has to be concise. Nobody wants to read three pages of you explaining why you want to get an interview at a particular residency program. And finally, it needs to be particular. It needs to be specific. You know, your reasons for joining a program or getting interviewed to the program have to be specific and tailored to that specific institution. ERCP, if you can do that, you have a chance of succeeding and potentially getting an interview. And I want to go over three examples of, you know, letters of interest that I've received. And don't worry, I've modified these. These aren't the exact ones. And I've actually communicated with all three people who have allowed me to graciously share their letters of interest and these aren't the exact ones because I've modified them and changed them and I've protected uh, and made them anonymous. So this is letter one. Dear Dr. Owen, thank you for the opportunity to meet with you in person. I am highly interested in your residency program based on the strong clinical focus, educational opportunities, and collegiality as stressed on the website. Currently, I'm an intern at X. I'm attaching my CV for your consideration. I appreciate your time and energy in this process. Well, I don't think this is a great letter of interest, right? It's not really engaging. You know, this sounds and looks very similar to many that I receive. You know, it's no different than other ones that I've received. It's not really relevant either. The reasons here are not compelling. Like you could have written this to any program, like general surgery, radiology, you know, even programs within the same specialty. Like there's nothing unique about this, this letter, right? And yes, it is concise, which is great, but it's also not particular. There's nothing specific in here. You know, yes, collegiality stressed on your website, but that's not very specific, right? Like you have to be much more specific in why you want to go to a program. So this likely is not going to be very well received by the people that are reading it. Let's go to example number two. Dear Dr. Wan, my name is X. I graduated from X with second class honors. I've completed two months of clinical rotations in the United States, which provided me with a wealth of experience, including what makes up the perfect program for me. I'm really interested in your program for the reasons listed below. Okay, then they go on to list. Resident center program with comprehensive training in an academic setting, collegial and supportive atmosphere. After receiving training, faculty members remain at the University of Maryland, which indicates a very positive work environment, diverse and engaging group of residents, an opportunity for an overseas elective through projects such as Rad Aid. I completed an observership at the nearby hospital of X. I enjoyed getting to know Baltimore, a vibrant city where I can further explore my passion for serving the underserved. I've attached my ERAS CV, which highlights my significant volunteering experience in addition to my research background. I'm thrilled at the prospect of being part of your program, and I hope you consider my application for an interview spot. I appreciate your time and consideration. So what do you think about this? Well, I think it's a little better than the previous one, but also probably not going to be seen favorably, right? And the reason why is, well, is it engaging? Not really, right? I mean, I'm not that interested in it based on 
what is being told here, right? It doesn't appear to be different than the other hundreds that I'm reading. Is it relevant? Well, it's a little bit better than the other one, right? Some of the reasons are compelling, like, you know, faculty members remaining at the University of Maryland, which indicates a very positive work environment. Okay, so this person did research, they understand the faculty and why they stay, you know, rad aid chapter, uh, doing an observership nearby. Okay, somewhat compelling, but not very compelling, right? Because there's a lot of programs that have a rad aid chapter, right? There's a lot of programs where faculty members remain on, uh, you know, at the same institution. So yes, better than the last one, but not very good, right? And is it concise? Yeah, overall it's concise, right? It's not terribly long and uh, it's not super specific. So I wouldn't call it particular. Uh, there are some things that are specific about it, but even those specific things, you know, like rad aid is general because I think now the vast majority of radiology residencies have a rad aid chapter. So again, a little better, but probably not going to lead to a real interview based on what I'm reading. Let's go to this third and last one. Dear Dr. Owen, my name is X and I am an MD candidate at X. The purpose of my email is to express my genuine and specific interest in the radiology residency program at the University of Maryland. As a non-traditional applicant with 10 years of experience in the AI, economics, and data science industry, I look forward to bringing the many leadership lessons I've learned. Over the course of my career, I've worked on a variety of different teams composed of unique individuals with different backgrounds, each with their respective goals, strengths, and weaknesses. I pride myself on being a true team player and a very hard worker with a unique understanding of the field of radiology as it pertains to innovation, AI, and health outcomes. I aim to enrich the program with these tenets of my personality and professional background. As an employee of X since 2018, I'm seeking a collegial program that combines extraordinary clinical training with ample opportunities to further develop my interest in AI, innovation, and informatics. The University of Maryland is incredibly unique in that the University of Maryland Medical Intelligent Imaging Center, UM2II, is housed in the Department of Radiology. I am seeking a program that endorses resident research in the field of AI, and I would love to contribute towards the work of Dr. X in developing at UM2II. As I outlined an article for the American College of Radiology, and this person provided a link to the article, I am very passionate about AI innovation at the resident level and strive to inculcate educational opportunities in this domain through residency. I have published abstracts on AI at RSNA and SIR and aim to continue doing so as a University of Maryland resident. On a personal level, my wife and I would be ecstatic to raise our kids in Baltimore. We are familiar with the schools and communities in Baltimore, and some of our closest friends and family members live in the area. Importantly, as our family continues to grow in a time with ever-increasing inflation, we are seeking an affordable city to settle down in, and Baltimore is at the top of the list. An opportunity to train at the University of Maryland would be an honor of a lifetime, and I look forward to contributing to the mission, culture, and vision of the program throughout my residency years. Thank you for your kind consideration of my application. Okay. This is a winner, right? I mean, is it engaging? Yes. Right away, he's telling me that he's he or she is a non-traditional applicant with 10 years of experience in a, automatically this person is unique. They're different than the normal applicants that we are getting letters from. Is it relevant? Yeah, it's compelling, right? I mean, they're very specific about the reasons that they want to come here, right? Like it's, you know, they're talking about, you know, the opportunities with AI, they they cite the UM2II center, the doctor there. They they provide the name of the doctor that you want to work with. And they, they show how they their experiences dovetail with the strengths of the program. So yes, I would say it's relevant. Is it concise? Maybe not so concise, but it's not terribly long either. I wouldn't call it concise, but it's not terribly long either. And is it particular? Yes, very specific, right? The reasons outlined here are very specific. Even the reasons for coming to Baltimore are specific, right? You know, inflation, you know, raising the family, um, the culture there, that's all there. So I would say this is a good letter of interest. And this, if the applicant is, you know, borderline, or if they're not, if we're not sure whether we want to interview them, we will interview them based on this letter, right? Now, obviously, if the applicant barely passed their USM Lee, has terrible score grades, you know, the rest of the application, like their well-roundedness is not very strong, we still may not interview, you know, the candidate. I mean, the letter is not going to be the only thing we look at, right? But obviously, if your credentials are already there or they're borderline and we get a letter like this, you know, we will likely be favorable in terms of offering or extending an interview, especially if we have room, right? So the letter can make a difference, right? So don't underestimate the power of the letter of interest, but make sure you do it well and remember the mnemonic ERCP. I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high yield video that will help you ace your residency. Thank you so much for your attention.